Most news stories of late are extremely difficult to believe. Global wars, economic uncertainty, a police state rising. And in the midst of all of this, are the persistent headlines of emerging and sometimes bizarre technologies. Fully automated robots in the workforce. Incredible advances in the understanding of health and immunity. Life extension technologies. Brain implantable microchips with unimaginable applications. We're going to be able to send nanobots, blood cell size devices inside our bloodstream. They'll keep us healthy from inside and they'll go inside our brains. And if that sounds very futuristic, there are already people that have computers in their brains. What will humanity look like in the next 10 or 20 years? A human with the perfect immune system and enhanced health functions? An infinitely smarter person with their brains and minds always attached to the internet? Or how about a person with the power to control their environment just by using their thoughts? It's almost impossible to say. The technological possibilities are infinite. Is this technology just being randomly developed by thousands of talented scientists and engineers without any real plan for the future paradigm that it's going to create? Or has there been a group envisioning this future all along? If you study uh, the 16th, 17th, and 18th century manifestos and books about uh, the Rosicrucians, as I did in, in, in the libraries and archives, you see that there's mention of all kinds of technological devices. I describe such a chamber in my book, the wonders that one saw when he entered the room of an alchemist who recently had died and the alchemist had bequeathed the will to the person and the person enters the room and what he describes. Well, it, it reads like, 21st century uh, technology. It may not surprise many viewers that there is a plan which has been discussed for decades amongst the top European and American social elite who spend their time gathering in closed door clubs dedicated to the occult. Now, wait a minute, what, what is the occult anyway? Uh, the word occult comes from, uh, simply means something that's hidden. Uh, and uh, they used that uh, back during the uh, Middle Ages um, when somebody was going against the uh, conventional church doctrine, then they'd say, well, they're occultists, they're looking into the occult. And, and this range is, is a pretty good wide range in occultism anyway, all the way from tree worship or nature worship, uh, all the way to worship of the devil, worship of some, you know, anthropological you know, being somewhere. Sometimes throughout history, whether because of strategy or because of moral obligation, world leaders will open the curtains ever so slightly, giving the general public an opportunity to glimpse into the secret world of the elite. In the year 1856, an industrial revolution was threatening to overthrow the traditional agrarian forces in Italy. In England, Parliament was debating over whether England should intervene in the Italian crisis, when during this debate, Prime Minister Benjamin Disraeli warned, there is in Italy a power which we seldom mention in this house, but without considering and understanding which we shall never rightly comprehend the position of Italy. I mean the secret societies. The secret societies do not care for constitutional government. They do not want existing society ameliorated they want it changed. He goes on to say, it is useless to deny because it is impossible to conceal that a great part of Europe, the whole of Italy and France, and a great portion of Germany, to say nothing of other countries, are covered with a network of these secret societies. Disraeli gave this warning to prevent England from miscalculating the outcome of their intervention. There was a, a war in Italy going on and Italy was infested with secret societies of all kinds and all shapes. But not only, not only Italy, in fact, the whole of Europe was infested and was out of balance because of all the secret societies that were running around, plotting, scheming. It was a terrible time of upheaval if you look closely upon the situation of the 19th century. According to Disraeli, the secret occult groups are a genuine power in Europe who can and will influence the outcome of England's actions in their favor. 
While this speech was given over 150 years ago, not much has changed in the secret lives of the global elite. Every July, the world's top politicians, bankers, corporate financiers, academics, and other elite members gather in Northern California for the annual Bohemian Grove Retreat. This two-week all-male get-together kicks off with their traditional cremation of care ceremony, where they burn the body of care in effigy in front of the mysterious great owl and eternal flame. Technologies such as the Star Wars Missile Defense Shield and the Manhattan Project were first discussed at the Bohemian Grove. The mysterious Georgia Guidestones stand as a monument to modern occultism. Sometimes called the American Stonehenge, it is unknown who commissioned this structure or why. What we do know is what the monument calls for, a world government with a world court, and the requirement that the human population never exceed 500 million. Presently, that means a reduction of about six and a half billion people. Interestingly, these calls are similar to the recent papal encyclical, in which Pope Francis calls for a global political authority to tackle global warming. What's even more alarming is who will be on the stage with the Pope when this encyclical is formally released. John Schellenhuber is a German professor that has some very radical views on climate change, including the belief that our planet is overpopulated by at least six billion people. Clinton White House insider Larry Nichols shared his eyewitness account of Hillary Clinton's witchcraft retreats. I was there, folks. You understand there's a difference in somebody that saw it or read it somewhere. I was there. Hillary would go on the weekend about every fourth, fifth weekend, she would disappear out to California. Finally, she came back and said, Hillary, what on earth is happening in California? She was running with her actress buddies, Linda Bloodworth Thompson and that crew. And uh, she never told me. Finally, Bill told me that she went, she goes out there to some kind of witch's church. And I said, you've got to be kidding me, Bill. No, no. He said, oh, no, man, she does there are countless other modern instances where the secret occult beliefs of the global social elite are revealed. Just as Disraeli warned his parliament that they can't estimate an accurate outcome without factoring in the agenda of the secret societies, the same is true today. If we do not consider the agendas of these modern and powerfully connected occult organizations, then we will never understand the true motivation behind much of the political and corporate decisions being made today. It's really interesting and somewhat scary when you consider that behind uh, some of the push for what has now come to be called the New World Order, or I guess you'd call it a, a global socialist system, um, is the idea that there is this occultism there. Uh, you get to the very top of the power pyramid and you find people who will go to occult ceremonies, wear robes. The Stanley Kubrick film, Eyes Wide Shut, was not totally fiction. The old old hair and all the winds make merry with thy dust. Hail fellowships, eternal flame. Once again, this summer sets us free. So what does all of this have to do with technology? Author and historian Theo Paymans reveals in his book, Free Energy Pioneer, John Worrell Keeley, that occult societies are just as obsessed with avant-garde technology as they are with exotic rituals. 19th century, extremely wealthy people were definitely not only interested in, you know, just gathering into some kind of hall and pulling down a pentagram and, and mumbling some, some evocations toward this or that deity. Occult groups routinely experimented with perpetual motion machines and zero-point energy motors. Oftentimes, when these occultists had these ideas and, and these avant-garde scientists, 
and they married those ideas into what I call occult technology. They created incredible machines and devices or prototypes of machines and devices, but they often would not work or they work in, uh, in, in, in incomprehensible ways or in ways that, you know, you couldn't predict.